You're listening to The Critical Thought, where we challenge our listeners to use critical thinking when examining the teachings of Jehovah's Witnesses. This is JT from The Critical Thought. In our last episode, we started discussing why Jehovah's Witnesses count time. One of the things that Jehovah's Witnesses have taught, and that is, it's very important to look at the historical context of where a particular teaching came from. In other words, what is the root? What is this built on? How did this get started? Who started it? When did it start? How did the concept of having to report how much time one spent talking to people about God come about? Well, we're going to show you how it started. Now, as mentioned before, the first thing you have to do is you have to get God to sign off on it. So notice how we get the setup where God is now in the process of signing off on this new teaching. July 1, 1943, Watchtower article, Righteous Requirements. These expressions of God's will by his king and through his established agency constitute his law or rule of action. So the first thing we see is we're being told by the Watchtower writers that we're going to see expressions of God. And these expressions of God will now constitute law and rule. Let's continue on. The Lord breaks down our organization instructions further and makes them more practicable. So once again, we see the buildup. The buildup is this is what the Lord is doing. All right. Now, what does the Lord do? Well, let's take a look at what the Lord does. He says the requirements for special pioneers shall be 175 hours and 50 back calls per month, which should develop into a reasonable number of studies. And for regular pioneers, 150 hours and as many back calls and studies as can be properly developed during that time. And for company publishers, he says, let us make a quota of 60 hours and 12 back calls and at least one study a week for each publisher. Now, the Watchtower said, he said, well, of course, the critical thinking question is, well, what does he say in the Bible? You said he says, so where does he say it? Then we see this phrase, let us. Now, as a student of the Bible, when was the last time you heard this phrase, let us? Is it not when God was talking to the word with the creation of man, let us? And yet the watchtower is using that same phraseology, let us make a quota of 60 hours. Now, this is called signing something with God's signature. But it gets even better. These directions come to us from the Lord through his established agency, directing what is required of us. And for those who really love the Lord and are guided by his counsel, that is a reasonable service requirement. Once again, we see in order for something to become a teaching, you have to get God to sign off on it. Well, where did these instructions come from? These instructions come from the Lord. But did they? Did God instruct any human servant to set up a quota of 60 hours? We're talking about critical thinking. Notice what this particular article concludes with. This expression of the Lord's will should be the end of all controversy. It is for your good that these requirements are made, for thereby you are enabled to prove your integrity and magnify the Lord's name. Once again, we see this signing off with God's signature. Did you catch that little point? This expression of the Lord's will should be the end of all controversy. You see, the entire purpose of this article was to lay to rest anyone who raised a question, who took issue with having to turn in time. Yes, it was signed off by God and therefore all controversy, all discussion should cease. Now, this is the whole problem. God never signed off on it. God never said any of this. 
Yet it was presented as such, just like with the Pharisees, washing up to the elbows. Now, how do these types of little man-made rules impact people's lives and become burdens for people to carry? Can you imagine how difficult it was if you had a Jehovah's Witness sister with three kids who now believes that in order to meet the requirements of God, she is now struggling to get 60 hours as a publisher. Anything less means she is not holding up the righteous requirements of God. This is what Jesus referred to when he talked about the burdens of men. And we see that this is literally a burden. And over the years, what started out being told to people that this is a requirement of God, the Watchtower began to back away from it because many Jehovah's Witnesses realized this is not really what God requires. And as a result, over the years, the Watchtower has reduced the hours lower and lower. In fact, today, in order to be a publisher, one only needs to report at least 15 minutes. These are the types of rules of man that Jesus Christ was very concerned about. Now, how is time used within the organization? The more time you have, the more spiritual you're considered. Well, one way that counting time is used when you're looking to give men in the congregation's position of responsibility as an elder or ministerial servant, his time is used as a barometer. I can recall as an elder in so many meetings where you would have an individual who was being considered for an appointment as an elder or a ministerial servant. And the national average, for example, was 9.7 hours. And his own personal time was 9.1. And you would literally see much discussion back and forth just because the man didn't have point eight hours. Nothing about, well, how does he treat his family? How was he viewed? This becomes the final determining factor as to whether or not this man's gonna be appointed. His hours are below the national average. So the counting of time over the years has been used by the organization as nothing more than a barometer of a person's spirituality. Now, doesn't that sound just like the Pharisees? I invite everyone to read this article for yourself so that you can ask the critical thinking question. Does this sound like something from God or a group of men sitting around a conference room table? And that article is the July 1st, 1943 Watchtower. In fact, we'll give you the link. You can go read it for yourself. That's the critical thought of the day. This program was sponsored by Critical Thinkers.